Okay, we are recording. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Yeah, just in time. All right, so let's start uh, with our vision and charge. So um, we want to work cooperatively with our town and our community to raise awareness and move with a sense of urgency. Uh, we talked about our town manager goals last time. Any questions on um, what the town manager's goals are and our own alignment with the pillars that we have? Okay. Um, again, our pillars focus on heat pump, legislative actions, solar, transportation, and sea pace. Um, oh, and then uh, in terms of goals, we had uh, six people attend the meeting last time, uh, four education series so far, the annual report. We're going to have a discussion today on whether we need to have the annual report completed in December or the end of the fiscal year, which is in May, June, uh, Stephanie? It's in the end of June. End of June, thank you. Um, and then expense spend report, we're gonna see the first one, the first week of August, and then goals discussion. Again, we'll, we'll have a conversation today. I think it um, gels in well with the annual report timing as well. And then in terms of open actions, uh, Don and Stephanie, I think Don is out today, but uh, there was uh, the connection point with with mass development on pace, and I don't know where that's at, and if or about the cha chamber breakfast agenda uh, that discussion has happened, Stephanie. So yeah, I well because I it's on the agenda for today, so I was also confused about whether I should report out because I know Don at the last meeting said he would report out when he returned at the in the next meeting so not this one but the next one and i don't want to steal his thunder <laughs> so i don't know do you want an update or do you want to just wait for dawn i mean nothing's going to happen before then I, things have happened but nothing's going to more is going to happen before then i don't think and it might be nice to let him be the one to report out okay yeah that's fine thanks Stephanie. sure uh next one's for dawn too and then uh stephanie the pace flyer Plus, um can I say that yeah. um, the status of that is definitely in process, not 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 started. Or the second one too, yeah, you're right. And then even this one, right? The pace flyer, right? Yeah, that's stuff. in process as well. Yep, yep. And Don was working on that. Yep, same thing with festival planning. I think we have that on the agenda today. Um, yeah, that's underway. I still need people to sign up and we'll talk about it later. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Thank you. And then I think we can mark this as complete. And uh, I sent the letter to the town manager about adopting the specialized stretch code. And it might be on the packet as well. Uh, Stephanie, I didn't get a chance to look at it. It is. Okay, we'll talk about it today. Or is that part of the agenda? Or can I pull it up now, Stephanie? Uh, it's, uh, I got to look at the agenda. Uh, it's not. Okay, so let me pull it up. Okay. All right, I'll let you all just scan through this and let me know if you have any questions or updates that I need to make. Sorry, this went out already? Yeah. Yeah. I had some feedback from um Jesse, because I wanted him to also add some benefits. So um, just thinking about the contractors and developers. And so there's just um, some information here about that as well that we included. Yeah, 
Yeah, this looked great to me. So um, that part is completed, but I do think that um, we need to have next steps to, you know, check on the status and provide, you know, there's a specialized code adoption toolkit and yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, Andra, we did receive a toolkit from the Green Energy Alliance, right? And so I, I sent that over as well to Paul, and uh, I think he included uh, somebody from the, I'm going to get the strong building, whatever the department is, but yeah, there's, I, I cc that person as well. Rob Mora. Yeah. Is the building commissioner. Really, Commissioner. Thank you. You're welcome. So, but but yeah, there needs to be some pressure that we need to apply, and that the community can apply as well. Um, I've talked to, it, well, again, you know, we should talk, all talk to our counselors as well. I talked to Alicia. I've talked to Anna about this. Um, I think at this point we as just individuals outside of ECAC can continue to apply pressure, unless Andra, you're thinking other ways through ECAC. Well, we could have use our, um, you know, educational program to increase attention on the various ways that the town can um, support decarbonizing our buildings. And have you know that be a part of it so that people know this is in process and something that they can encourage the town to move on any any thoughts on that from the rest of the group or i mean jesse is that something you would be willing to lead I'm not I mean, sure what it could look like, but yeah. What what I mean essentially the isn't the next step is wouldn't we want to hear back from the town manager and the town council via the town manager? Because if it's if if people are in favor of this, we should we have limited time. We shouldn't take our time promoting something that maybe is gonna just happen. And we'd want to hear back from Paul. And if Paul said, yeah, this is great. I'm going to put this in front of the town council. I love your date. Thank you for giving me the support to do this. That's great. Um, yeah, then we don't need to do much, right? It's just adopting the code at that point is, is what you're saying. So, and so, and so I think that the follow-up might be to get a formal response from Paul. I'm like, oh, wait, what's your reaction? What, what are you going to do with this? Yeah, Vasu, I was just going to suggest a similar thing that if you just send him a follow up email saying, you know, I sent you on March 10th a request. I'm just at the ECA, I would like to report back to the ECAC and we'd like to know what the next steps will be. Hmm. And I think if you, you know, make it specific what you're looking for to get from them besides just the commitment, maybe like a, where has this gone or what's the next step to get it to the council? Okay. And how can you help? <laughs> yeah. It's always a good one. Yeah. Okay. So can I, I, will, can I make that. a suggestion? Yeah. Can we, um, can I suggest that we either contact our counselors directly because they're going to need to know about this too. I mean, if Paul brings it to them cold, it might be a little bit funny. <laughs> um, or maybe just send that same letter if we can do that to all the town counselors. Can we do that as ECAC or is that? No, it's obvious? already, Vasu already sent it to the town manager and the council president. And so the council president yeah. determines what goes in their packets. You shouldn't just send it to all of them. Okay. Think, should be... As a committee, if you're doing something officially as a committee, you just send then it, it should go through the town manager 
and he gets okay. it to the council and you can copy the council president obviously because right. the council president will be the one to then send it to their members i know it seems like a complicated pathway but it's just you know keeps it helps them as the sort of you know executives if you will keep track of what's being requested and where it's going okay that's all right is it okay for us to contact our representatives absolutely sure okay, good. Yeah. that's what we should do that. no problem yeah. doing that should should we tag team on specific counselors or i know we've talked about this before just, count, just that, contact them just contact them they'll we'll get <laughs> if they get more than one email it's not a big deal we're contacting them as individuals not as the committee yeah yeah okay I'm good with that just outside of our work, uh, just a side note, I've been to a number of trainings now on the, the stretch code and specialized code as it, and the consensus amongst the design community is that this is a great set of ideals and the rollout has been um, confusing at best. This is a, it's not user-friendly yet. And, and so a big part of what's happening behind the scenes um, is trying to make all of these rules and regulations that will ultimately do good actually usable by the design and construction community. Because right now, it is confusing. And again, that's, I would say that's a euphemism. You mean the legislation wasn't written by design and building people? <laughs> it's not, it's like yeah I you know I'm not going to take up our time if anybody wants to hear someone rant you call me later tonight <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's it's not all in one place you can't just open up a book and know how to meet a well-intentioned set of ideals you have to look in multiple sources cross-reference and it's very disorganized it'll it'll get there but they rolled this out before it was finished just a little so it's, it's, it wasn't it, was, it wasn't good optics for for enhanced code unfortunately and i encourage maybe if the public is listening i encourage people don't judge it by its disorganization, judge it by what it's trying to do for carbon reductions, which is a good thing. How's that? Yeah, thanks, Jesse. Jesse, can I just ask, is as they as it gets revised, um, does to make it more user friendly, does is that going to require communities to re-approve it, uh, re-adopt it, or is it um is sort of all part of the process? I don't think so. I think what's going to happen is the stretch code stays the stretch code and any any community, you automatically re-up there okay. and the specialized code will do the same. So there's two okay. parallel paths and as those update, they will update automatically for each community um, as they go. So the only change would be changing from the stretch to the specialized. And then you'd just be on a separate track, which is, and that track is the specialized code very much is the stretch code plus a yeah. series of things. So it's cumulative and parallel, if that makes sense. So if we get any um, feedback or pushback from the ma town manager or the council that um, this is really a confusing code um, uh, and they're not sure if they want to adopt it uh we can say that it's 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 that it's not well i'm not sure if it's acknowledged but that it's 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 recognized as such but it's also recognized that it will be evolving into a, a better uh a, a, a more user-friendly document yes and i would this the specialized code isn't any more confusing than the new stretch code they both are okay it's, so it's 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 a it's an issue of different entities have control over different parts of the process. And in New York, they give you one book. In Massachusetts, you got like 13. So, so Jesse, I don't know if you've seen this and I don't know how helpful it is because I didn't go into detail, but it takes you through 
step by step by step approach, I think, on what you need to do with links. Um, and I can send it over to Stephanie and have her share this with all of you. But I don't know if this would help at all. Um, as far as understand, oh, it, yeah, it talks about how do you even adopt the step. Uh, the step I think the adoption That's, is the simple part. Exactly. Yeah. I was just going to say it's not about the adoption. It's about the implementation. Mm -hmm. It's about yeah. what our inspectors yeah. and have to mm -hmm. follow up with, and it's about what the contractors and developers have to do to comply and that's where it's confusing Got it. Got it. so it's confusing for the enforcement folks too so it's not just the consultants and the contractors and the developers it's you know it's confusing for our team here on this end that's trying to get up to speed as well and look i'd take a confusing building code that's geared towards carbon emissions over a simple one that's not yeah. And, We've I, already, and that's where we're going to be, but not for six months or a year, in my opinion. Yeah. So we're autom automatically, because we are a green community and we have already adopted the stretch code, those updates will happen automatically. So we're already, you know, going to be impl implementing and enforcing the updated stretch code. So all we're looking to do now is to get the specialized code as well, in addition to that. And I... If I recall, Jesse, and I know that this was something maybe Rob had mentioned um, when we, the, who is the building commissioner, Rob Mora, that they, because we're already going to be updating with this stretch code, um, that they're sort of working on that and that it, like, I think they were saying that maybe it made sense to do the specialized code, like the following year. That's my recollection of that conversation. It's like start with that and then do the the specialized code the second year. And I know we all said, or I I should say the ECAC all voted not to wait to push it for happening now. So I just want to be clear that that's kind of what how at least the initial town's response was. And I know that Paul reached out to the building commissioner, so it's likely that that's the response he'll give him. But I haven't heard anything officially. That's that's true. You are remembering that correctly. And I'm just not sure it makes a huge difference that both of them are going to update again next year. It's going to keep changing and settling and there's going to be it's going to be figuring itself out large in a large degree. Um, and so I'm not sure if it matters when. Not to me, like, I, yeah, I could be wrong. But. I think if they're both got more complicated, you're going to do and builders and and architects and design professionals and engineers, they work in dozens of and dozens of towns. And so they're going to they're going to need to, to understand this in many ways. So what Amherst does is not shouldn't impact them. If anything, this is a town where people can sharpen their pencils and get better at delivering higher performance buildings. How's that? That sound good? Thanks, Jess. Um, okay, so before we review and vote on minutes, I think Steve, it might be your turn to take minutes. You already are. Awesome, thank you. Um, okay, let, we have two meeting minutes to review. So let's uh, vote on the one from 2.15. Do you want I to move, go back and review it? Okay, I, move we, I move we accept both of them, both sets of minutes. You have Can to do them one at a, no, you have to do them one at a time. Okay. Okay, Sorry. I move we accept the 215 minutes. I second. <laughs> okay. okay, so uh, via voice vote, vote, I'll have to actually hear you. So be sure to unmute, please. Um, in no order, Raghavan? Yes. D? Yes. Drucker? You're, you're muted, Laura, sorry. Yes. Rose? Yes. Selman? Yes. Breger? Yes. Goldner? Yes. And Roof? 
Yes. Okay. Okay. Great. Minutes Thank you. Are approved. And let's vote on the meeting minutes from three one. I agree. Just one quick um, requested edit on on the minutes I took yes uh, last time. Um, just a minor thing, but I feel badly about it. Just in in the uh, where I had guests at the top, um, I wouldn't mind putting Kathy's better title <laughs> there, uh, uh, town councilor, uh, and um, the official name of her committee. <laughs> sure. The chair of the elementary school building committee. Yeah, it, it's down below where, where she was introduced, but it just looks funny up there. Yep, I can do that. We have someone taking notes today. Did I miss Steve. that? Steve. Yeah, I am. So we just one at it. Um, Dwayne, you said you're going to move. Yeah, uh, then I'll, if, unless anybody else, else has anything to say, I'll move to uh, accept. What, I made took the minute, so is it bad form for me no, to move? <laughs> I move that we accept those minutes. I'll second. You, you, you wrote the notes and you found an issue with it, and now you're. <laughs> Okay, um, so again, voice vote, please. Uh, Roof? Yes. Goldner? Yes. Breger? Yes. Selman? Yes. Rose? Yes. Raghavan? Yes. D? Yes. And Drocker? Yes. Okay. Scylla, were you here last week? No, wait, wasn't that a vote on, oh, wait, was that the... Yeah. One minutes. Oh, then can yeah, I abstain? Three, one. You, yeah, you, you yes, you there. can abstain here. Yeah. You can abstain, but you don't need to. It is okay to vote if you weren't there. If you read them and I did read them, watched. it seems fine. But I, yeah, what I, I can abstain or but yes, you can do whatever you want to do. <laughs> I'll abstain. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, time for public comments. If anyone from the public would like to ask a question or make a comment, please electronically raise your hand. Okay, I'm not seeing any. Okay. We'll turn it over to you, Stella, for the transportation progress report. Um, did I mention that Green Energy Consumers is coming to talk on record? That's on the 22nd. I know it's on the schedule. Yeah, the, the 22nd of, that's the main update. Um, let me look. Um, yeah, they're coming to talk end of April or wait, early May, April 26th is the day. Uh, the Green Energy Consumers is going to come give their like EVs 101 webinar at 530. Um, I'm trying to figure out the the bus panel, um, well, that's kind of like a work in progress. And uh, that's pretty much it. So you said 326, right? Uh, 426. Oh, sorry. OK. So that's to our meeting? Mm -hmm. Yeah. OK, so we'll want to do some outreach to for the public too, right, on that? Yeah, so I'll put yeah. together a flyer. Um, and we can also advertise that at, because I believe the sustainability festival is before. Yes, it is. Assume, yeah, before. Yeah, a lot of yeah. the advertising for that can be actually just telling people, hey, come to our event. Yeah, let's do that, uh, Stella. Especially, I think last time when Erin was here, we didn't have a lot of people because uh, mm -hmm. the flyers went out pretty late. So let's do that. Just a question uh, What about uh, the communication with tech? How has that been going? Do they have meetings at all? That I haven't been getting responses. I've been emailing a lot of people and I haven't been getting responses and people are so busy. I don't want to nag, um, but I can do a little bit more nagging. I just feel bad. 
Yeah, I mean, we looked at the town manager goals earlier, right? And I don't think we have anything related to transportation other than inventory. And and that I think it should come from TAC as well. And yeah. we can partner with them. And I mean, they have the plan laid out. And for at least next year's town manager goals, we should be connecting with them and figuring out what are some of the key actions or goals we can take that we can add on to the town manager goals for 2025. Um, that was definitely missing from this year's town manager goals. Mm-hmm. Uh, Andra? I'm wondering, since you're having difficulty reaching people, if it's time to put a suggestion like that into writing and um, send it to the chair and to the staff person and get it on their agenda. If they have meetings, and they, do they still have meetings still? They do, okay. I okay. think so, yeah, they're just at a terrible time for me. Um, okay. So it's really a struggle to get to those meetings, yeah. Okay. So it may be, you know, someone else has to represent the committee at a meeting, but at least they know that we're here to support this yeah. process working together. Yeah, or or take the conversation offline with one of them and you know, have a conversation and talk to them about our goals uh, from the CARB and then what their goals are and how can we align for 2025. Yeah, cool. I just don't really know how to take the conversation offline if like it doesn't begin somewhere like online. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so it kind of ends up in the in the same place of like not wanting to nag busy people. Yeah. Stephanie, is there any way to facilitate it? I mean, I think an email to the chair and the staff person is a good direct way to reach out to them. Um, you know, when you can copy me on it mm -hmm. and then that way if you don't get a response then I can maybe try to figure out a way to make it get acknowledged somehow yeah. or the other part is we can invite them to our meetings and we could take time to review the card um, I mean it's been a while we're Laura. trying to get on their agenda. Are we trying to get on their agenda? I mean, I'm assuming Stella's been emailing people, right? <laughs> so I don't know if more emails are going to help. That's but, kind of what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you? So you reached out to the staff person as well? I don't think I reached out to this. Honestly, like, I don't want to like name names. That like I don't want to name name names because I don't. I also don't want to call out busy people who are volunteers for like not writing me back. Do you know what I mean? So I'd so rather I, not. Go I know someone that is on TAC who sits in the room down the hall from me, <laughs> and so I can certainly ask him to ask <laughs> uh, to put us on an agenda if that's the goal of this. Is that we want to have a discussion with them, right? Yeah, I think the goal was that that was the goal. That was the content of of the emails. Um, was okay, just so to get, if like, you can forward things. me the email, I'll um, see if I can get him to put it on the agenda. That'd be perfect. Okay. Thanks. And if you've been asked to be on an agenda, like if you've specifically said that of the staff liaison and the chair mm -hmm. of that committee and you're not getting a response, though, you should let me know that. Like, that's why I don't think it would be bad to do that one more time. Okay. But copy me, please. Yeah. Because that way we have channels internally that I can say this committee is not being responsive to another committee that's trying to do some work that... Mm -hmm is um, relevant to both committees so you should just let me know okay or just cut yeah just copy me on it Sounds good. thanks Stella. uh and stephanie are we going to talk about pace or we're going to wait for don i think i, I feel bad talking about it because <laughs> i think he'd like to tell you what he's done and okay. what i'm doing so we can we can wait till the next time okay all right we'll move that to next week then on the agenda item so Andra, over to you on the legislative updates. Andra, can you hear us? We're also on mute. Uh, 
Hi, sorry, my computer crashed. So, um, sorry, where are we now? Legislative updates. Okay, great. So, um, one really great piece of news we just got today is that um, the two new DPU commissioners were announced and um, one of them is a well-known um, climate justice activist for Conservation Law Foundation, Stacy Rubin. And it's like, oh my gosh, this administration means business. It, it, the, the Department of Public Utilities is a, um, not just a regulatory agency, it is a, they, it's an adjudicatory <laughs> agency. It's kind of like a court. <laughs> and um, the, the way that they are, have been able to stall or promote um, the, the climate goals of, you know, or, you know, put the gas companies in charge of decarbonizing themselves, which didn't work out so well, you know, that kind of thing can um, be really major. So um, the one thing that I'd like to recommend is that we um, write, draft, and, and recommend that the town manager and council send a um, welcome <laughs> to the new commissioners and a request that the uh, one of the early um, things that they take up is the backlog um, for approving municipal aggregations. So um, that is something I'm happy to draft and um, just would like to take people's questions about it and input. Do people know that the um, DPU has not approved of any municipal aggregation in two years? And there are about 40 applications in line. Yeah, I, Andra, I also heard that it's uh, our CCA has been stalled because of some churn in Northampton. Um, Not anymore. Okay, We're making, has that been addressed? Okay. Yeah, it's, that's a, a, I mean, we should report in on that because um, the CAC <laughs> should participate um, in its next steps, but let, let's take that next. So any questions or input about um, this, making this recommendation, I would bring the letter back to our next meeting. Steve. Andra, were you asking about writing to the two new members or to the DPU in its entirety? Well, the DPU is run by three commissioners. So one is a holdover that has a four-year term um, and so was can't be replaced by our um, new governor until that term's over. And I don't know when it's over. Um, so, I mean, I would actually recommend that we write it to the governor and climate chief Hoffer and the um, um, Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs, Rebecca Tepper, you know, include everybody, <laughs> as well as the three commissioners. Yeah. Okay. So is the recommendation that um, Andra just made, is everyone okay with that? If Andra drops the letter, I'm, I'm yeah. not opposed to that at all. I'm just wondering um, under whether it would make sense to um, instead or in addition uh, have that have a letter like that written from the Valley Green Consortium of the three towns 
um, uh, that are working together on, on, on the municipal aggregation um, and possibly even trying to get that co-signed by some other municipal aggregations in waiting? Um, yeah, that's a good idea. And there may already be an entity organizing that. I don't think that's our role as ECAC no. to, to do. And um, oh, I think we should do it as a town and as a um, MOU working group <laughs> for our municipal aggregation or encourage yeah. the other two towns to also do it. Yeah, and I'm happy for any other input. So, I mean, the, the governor, when she was AG, was generally supportive of municipal aggregations um, as opposed to competitive suppliers for serving residential markets. So, um, yeah. hopefully, she'll be um, sensitive to this. I imagine so. Laurie, do you have something? No, I just wanted to support this. It sounds great. And I'm also hoping to hear an update on where the CCA is. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll do that, put it on the agenda for the next meeting. And um, I'll do my best to get it in the packet. Sorry. Um, so I had some other suggestions that I, um, would like to make for um, <clears throat> the for actions that we could take a, as a town, uh, you know, uh, resolutions we could write to um, support legislation and uh, executive action. Um, and this this one is also an executive action or. or an action targeted targeting the executive branch, um, and <laughs> it's to support a petition that the Springfield Climate Justice Coalition um, initiated, and the, uh, a large uh, coalition of climate organizations are supporting to um, try to. First of all, stop a new um, gas line expansion that's proposed for um, Long Meadow Springfield area that would go through an environmental justice community and um, given that we need to get off gas doesn't make sense to expand um, there's there's a number of arguments for stopping it before it starts, which is where it's at. No permits have been um, uh, given yet. Um, so it makes it something that might actually be able to <laughs> stop as opposed to things you know, like a compressor station that's already built that you wanna shut down. Um, but the, the, the petition is more general and it's to stop expanding the gas system. They're not actually talking about lines from the gas main to your house. We already have that moratorium in Amherst and the other seven communities in Berkshire Gas's um, Eastern division. But that's not what this is. It's really the, the um, what's called the lateral lines um, that pump the gas from place to place and provide the, the gas to the retail market. So it's just like, you know, Douglas Mass didn't have gas. And now they're going to. It was approved by the DPU and a bunch of other permitting agencies. 
Why, <laughs> why would we be doing that? So um, it would be great if Amherst would go on record and um, help generate support for this petition drive, which is meant to get a lot of attention to the administration to take an action saying, okay, let's just stop digging the hole deeper. So. Andre, could you repeat the names of the organizations in Springfield that were, I guess, spearheading this effort? Springfield Climate Justice Coalition. Thank you. And do they have like a petition that is fairly straight or that we could read or it could be included in a letter that yeah. CAC sends to town council? Yeah, it's a pretty simple uh, petition written in pretty easy language to understand. Yeah. So you're asking- Something you can share um, yeah. with us, Andra? Um, I, I'm on my phone, so- Well, for next for the next meeting. Yeah, yeah. Um, but for the, the public's information, it's um, the, you can find it at the website, stopthetoxicpipeline.org. Okay, to be followed up with uh, more information. Lori? I, we might not need more information because we can just read this. Um, it says, uh, let's see if I can find the actual, um, well, there's a lot of background information too. Uh, where's the actual petition? If you look at the top. Minor petition. It. There it is. So the petition says, um, uh, no, it's, oh, here. Gas companies like Eversource are profiting off the gas infrastructure expansion at the expense of ratepayers statewide, bringing more expensive, dangerous, polluting energy through our communities. We envision a just and rapid transition away from gas to a future of clean heat powered by clean electricity. This is urgent for our planet, our health, and for our communities facing expansion projects right now, like Springfield and Longmeadow. We urge Governor Healy to put a halt to new gas system expansions until there is a concrete plan for a just transition to a clean and green energy future. That's the whole statement. There's a lot of background information, but that's the statement that you sign on to when you sign the petition. So I would say to speed this along a little bit so that it's timely, um, Maybe we can just uh, draft, you know, draft a letter, support a letter to the town manager that we would have to, I guess, see next time. Let's get the letter drafted. I can draft it if if you don't want to do all of them, Andra. Um, uh, asking the town to support this effort to stop this pipeline. I guess there's also um, maybe we could do two things. Maybe we could help to um, spread the word about the petition itself to the public and to um, have the town go on record um, in, in sending the administration a, a, a letter to maybe, you know, support this ask. It would take, um, it would be an opportunity for a lot of education, I think is what the point of it would be. To have the town council consider it, to have, you know, that lead to an article in the bulletin. And, um, but the petition is a very, you know, kind of immediate thing. So if we could take, a vote if we were ready to say, yeah, sure, let's let the public know about this petition. Um, then that would be an important action. Yeah, Andra, the, the other thing is I'm wondering if we can work with ACJ or Sunrise Amherst and as part of the climate festival 
to do some outreach and bring about awareness? Can that be a platform? I mean, I also agree that maybe, Laurie, I don't know if you want to look at the petition, write a letter to the town manager, but I think for community awareness, we can, we should be using the climate festival for that. Absolutely. Yeah. A a CJA and other organizations will have the petition there. Okay. Um, and yeah, it'd be great to have it at all our tables. Um, okay, so. But the, um, yeah, they're trying to get thousands of signatures before, you know, by Earth Day. They, they're really, you know, trying to get an early declaration from the governor. So I'm trying to put this into a motion format. And I guess I would say I move that we send a letter to be drafted um, to the town manager and town council supporting this anti-pipeline effort and also do our best to just spread the word to sign the petition. Does that make sense? Something along those lines. Yeah, I think so. Uh, unless people have questions. Dwayne? Yeah. I'm just not sure if we need a motion or just a decision to draft a letter and then a motion to, to, to send the letter when we look at it and okay. get comfortable with it. I, um, I, I do want to, you know, just my own, I just want to be clear about, you know, what our limitations are with regard to, um, is this lob? This isn't lobbying, but it's kind of, um, um, I just want to make sure it's what we're doing is well within our jurisdiction. Um, obviously, any of us can sign the petition it, itself um, individually. Um, you know, there's a lot here that the town council and the town manager would like to probably know. You know, what does this mean about electricity reliability? What does ISO New England say? What are the town? What are the Springfield politics? Springfield politicians or or, or leadership think about this? Yeah, this is not a line that's for electricity. It's only for the retail market. Which well, so it's okay. I don't understand that um, exactly, but so it's distribution lines as opposed to the main uh, lines coming in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the re the, the elect <laughs> power generators are retail markets too. If they're you're sending if you're selling to an end use customer being a power plant. Uh, no. <laughs> that's, not that. no. that's not what it is. Yeah. Yeah, this one's tricky though, right? I think Dwayne brings up some good points. And are we, what are we expecting the town manager and the council to do? Um, well, let's put the letter aside. Do we as the resident representatives or appointed representatives in town um, see supporting this regional effort um, to, it's both supporting a frontline community in our region. And it's um, supporting the direction that we know we have to go, um, which is to stop building new. So. Yeah, I just don't know what we could do with that. I think as individuals, we can sign the petition, but as ECAC, as the no, end of the day, we're part of. We make, we're, we're policy. So I think this is exactly up our alley. We, anyway, uh, Jesse has his hand up. I'm yeah, sorry. Go ahead, Jesse. Well, I'd like to think that if there was a climate committee in another town and there was a gas pipeline coming through our town, that they would not be worried about this and they would eagerly join this movement and unabashedly sign on. And, and if the town council, if somebody at legal thinks we're out of our jurisdiction, they can tell us. That's my opinion. Steve? 
I'm still thinking what I wanted to say. Um, yeah, I, I think you know, the concept, yes, absolutely in favor of that. Um, I think I'd want to go look at that website and read a bit more of the background information before I was willing as an ECAC member to vote on a resolution. So I guess I, I like the idea that um, Andra and Lori put something together, put it in the packet for our next meeting. That'll give us some time to, to read the background information, look at the letter, and decide exactly how we want to position ourselves as ECAC and what we want to recommend to the town manager and town council for them to do. So all for it. I just want to do some more reading about it before making any definitive vote. Thanks, Steve. That, that was my intent as well. I mean, I think there may be, uh, you know, personally, I might be more comfortable suggesting a letter that's a little bit more generic than specific to this particular pipeline, but just that um, we, we, the town and town council, if they're so willing, um, support the, the continued moratorium on, on, uh, on fossil fuel infrastructure um uh in 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 not only our own town but neighboring towns uh that is contrary to the goals of of uh, amherst and the commonwealth um and that um such projects such as this seem to be moving in the wrong direction i, I something along those lines i mean just without reading it as opposed to being specific to this this project um, might be a little bit more politically um palatable to um, folks. Okay. Um, I do want to just um, clarify something. Uh, the town official town policy on um, the moratorium that we're under is actually in um, opposition to the moratorium and yeah. officially asking um, for Berkshire Gas to lift the moratorium mm -hmm. and allow more gas. That is something that we could ask to be right. changed. Look, Lori, and then Laura. Yeah, I, I think that uh, I, I took out your words, Duane. I thought they were great. I was typing them down as fast as I could. Um, but I think as part of this, we would ask that they that they support the current moratorium and stop fighting it, stop being officially against it. Um, that would make it directly relevant and also regionally relevant. It wouldn't be nice to you know be asking for our own fossil fuels while saying other communities can't have them, right? <laughs> so maybe like a point of order here. I feel like we've talked about writing a letter about this exact issue and nobody did it. So um, regarding the town moratorium language. So just wondering if that's, I feel like we're off agenda. Like I feel like we've kind of gone unless this is on the agenda and I'm not aware of it. Um, um, actually, we that that did go in. That was in um, response to the Berkshire Gas asking the um, council to give feedback on their plan to continue fossil fuels. But we didn't actually in that letter ask for the reversal of the town's policy. We did talk about it with um, the town manager in a meeting, though, Laura. Okay, I'm just a little confused what's going on. Well, we did, we did, the agenda did expand a little bit, but in a way that makes sense, right? It would be- It's part of the legislative update. Well, we, have so a lot of stuff to, we have a lot of stuff to get to, so I'm just trying to like figure out what we're doing here. Are we writing, like, are we writing a letter to the town council? Are we trying to sign this petition as ECAC? I'm just confused as to what's going on. Well, we, we don't know yet. No, none of that. So I think it is, let's review the website and come back next week, whether it makes sense for us to write a letter. But is or... that in the timeline? I feel like I heard from Andra, we need to have this done by Friday. No, no by yeah. April 22nd. Okay. April 22nd. Earth Day. Is that right, Andra? Um, there's no hard deadline, but the um, Springville Climate Justice Coalition is asking for a declaration by Earth Day. So sooner the better that 
but okay. and only only individuals can sign. Yeah. Only so individuals I, can sign. Oh, sorry, what the petition. Petition. Can sign the petition. Any so entity what? can can declare their support for the idea. Okay, so their options are that ECAC declares our support, or the town council declares our support, or both. Yes. Okay. So, so can well, I jump in real quick? Yeah. You have so just this is just a logistical thing. So your next meeting is on the 29th of March, and then you have another meeting on the 12th of April. So if you get a draft in for the next meeting, then you can vote on it on the April 12th. If you're trying to sort of do something by the 22nd. I just wanted to point so, that out. Okay, and I, I, I volunteer to draft something, but I probably won't be at the next meeting uh, because the building energy conference in Boston is that day and I was hoping to be there. I don't know what time it will end. And I can't make it to the next meeting either. So, I mean, for one, we have to talk about that. Uh, who's going to be leading this meeting if Lori and I are not. Um, hmm. uh, I guess, should we have the meeting next week then? Is that an option? No. I think that would work for me because we don't want to skip it because we have a lot on the agenda, I think. Um, it is if I post the agenda. So the agenda had just has to be posted by Monday. So as long as you realistically think you can um, have items together and, but I can post it. Next week, I, I would be late. I would be an hour late next week, but I could be there a half, half hour late at least. So should we just meet for, I mean, I'm not gonna make it next week either. I'm gonna be traveling for five weeks. And April um, it's over. <laughs> um, and Laurie, maybe I'm, maybe I'm speaking on your behalf here, but chime in because it's going to be next week if everybody agrees. Should we just have the meeting for an hour from five to six? Um, because it is and not part of our regular series. Um, and we can cancel the following one if necessary. That's, or, or five to 6.30. But yeah, that's fine with me. If it's okay with other folks, I might still be a few minutes late. Um, I have a live meeting that ends at five. Um, so I have to get to a computer. <laughs> yeah, Laura. Could we go through the rest of this agenda and decide what's on the agenda for next time to have yes, this? That's fine. I wanted to bring up the letter about the schools, and I will not be able to make a meeting next week. Okay. So I have action items. We need to talk about that. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, actually, the school was not part of the agenda, but okay. Let's uh, let's talk about annual report. And then we'll talk about schools. So, well, sustainability too has to. Yeah, we yeah. got to talk about that because I'm yeah. not here next. Yeah, time, right? we we have to. Okay, so so for annual report, I know Laura has your name, but I think this was a conversation that we were having last time about whether annual reports need to be completed in December or after the fiscal year ends in June. Um, oh, Stephanie, you had your hand raised. I was just going to say, Laura could certainly do this as an update as a ECAC member update to the work that she's doing with the because we had Kathy at the last meeting so this is yeah. just follow up okay doesn't have That's to good. be on the agenda specifically okay. as long as we share whatever she's showing I just have to add it to the packet okay all right Laura did you have some things you're on mute you're still on mute because my name's next to the agenda item, I did prepare something to say, but if you want to. About school or the annual report? About the annual report. I was actually surprised the school wasn't on the agenda because it was in the minutes from last time that we were going to talk about it this time, but we can just talk about that during ECAC updates. That's sure. Fine. Okay. Let's talk about the annual report. Okay. So I don't think this is not going to be a long discussion because I think we need some more information, but what we were talking. So just to put everybody on the same page, our, our um, charge says that the ECAC shall report annually to the town council the following, progress towards climate action goals, 
measures taken to reduce emissions and build resiliency, evaluation of the effectiveness and implementation of these measure, measures, funding needed to enable initiatives recommended by ECAC, and community engagement. So what we were talking about last time, we have historically submitted this annual report like in December or January or February, depending on how quickly we get it together. Um, that's probably not the best timeline to be able to influence the most important thing on this list, in my opinion, which is funding needs to enable initiatives recommended by ECAC. We've also been invited this last year and hopefully into the future to submit feedback to the council on the town manager goals, which I think fits under this in regards to progress towards climate action goals, which we've also gotten feedback that doing that in early fall is probably best. So I just wanna confirm the timelines on the budget and the TM goals. So I wanna do that first. And then I think we can come back to this topic point and, and try to just work out a timeline. But I think some trying to pull something together in August that we can then present to the town council in September is probably the right time frame. but I just wanna confirm that. The only other thing I'll say about this is like, measures taken to reduce emissions and build resiliency. I mean, that's really Stephanie's work. And if we're, if the town manager is actually doing his goals, he should be reporting on these every quarter when he does his quarterly reports to the council. So it could just be copying and pasting from there. I'm not sure that's actually happening, but like that, so I don't think that needs to be a huge focus of our work. I think what our really main focus needs to be on is the funding piece and, you know, then I guess giving feedback to the town manager goal. Yeah, I'm fully aligned with the uh, thought process, Laura. And you know, Anna mentioned that the town manager goals, she prefers to have that by August of every year. And so if we complete our report a month before, and then we can start thinking about what do our town managers goals seem to be for the following year and be ready for that August report out to town council. I think the timeline would be more ideal versus doing it in December. Um, and you know, at the end of the fiscal year, we also know exactly how money was spent throughout the entire fiscal year. So it also makes sense for us to even write the report uh, because we will know how money was spent for the entire year. Um, Okay, so I'll continue. I'll talk to Stephanie again about her timeline in terms of reporting, and I'll try to get some information. So anyway, I think that that should be our goal is to like July, August, September timeframe, and then we can tr try to narrow that down over the next few months. Yeah, and any questions or concerns there? I'm not doing it in December anymore. Okay. Thank you. All right, uh, let's move on to the sustainability festival then. Okay, so I want to have all my ducks in order because next week is going to be weird. We haven't, I certainly won't be able to be in a meeting in two weeks and next week we don't quite know what's going to happen yet. So I want to try to have everything in order today. So that means getting everybody on the schedule. Now I have Andra, Steve, me and Don. I know Vasu is not going to be able to participate but Dwayne, Stella, um, Jesse, can you sign up for some times? Are there times you can make it that day? We don't have anyone in the afternoon right now. And so, so Lori, I can make it. I just don't know what time. I'll be heavily jet lagged. Right. So it, it really depends. So you're going to be I'll so make. jet lagged. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> so we got plenty of other people, but can I ask people to please sign up ASAP or let me know right now and I'll just write your names in? I'm working another booth, unfortunately, so I can't. So still, I can't be there. Okay. I apologize. This I've remind me the date. Okay, it's April twenty second, I believe. Right? It's which is Earth Day, Saturday, and uh, we're looking for slots one to three. There's nobody right now. One, two, and three p.m. until four p.m. and for cleanup. So there's nobody there. Oh, wait, no. Steve is at one, but from two on, there's no one at all. If you don't need me for setup, I I could take afternoon shifts and help with cleanup. My my schedule changed. 
So like uh, three and four p.m. or two to four p.m. or what do you want to do? Yeah, maybe the four is the cleanup. Cleanup sometimes happens a little early depending on the weather. It's not um, supposed to, but yes, it does. Yeah. <laughs> um, so 4 p.m. Do you also want to do 3 p.m. and I'll take you off in the yeah. morning? Because I can yeah. do the morning. Okay, so three and four. Okay, so I'll take you off in the morning, Andra, and I'll put me on. I'll make sure I show up with Don at first thing. I was hoping not to have to show up at eight, but I will if I have to. Um, and then we need someone from one and to take the one and two o'clock slots, two people for two o'clock. Any takers? Uh, I mean, you, yeah, you can put, put me down. Um, I, I just, I, I've had to leave town a number for some, uh, take care of some family stuff in Boston. And, and I don't always know when that's going to happen. So put me down. I've just, I could be a last minute emergency departure, which it is what it is. So, but put me down for sure. Put me down for as much as you need me, basically. I'll put you down for the, as a, I'll put you down for one and two o'clock when I have no, but then I have nobody else there. Um, I, I'm hemming and hawing because I, I have family visiting. Uh, uh, and um, bring them to the fair. Yeah. Well, that, well, exactly. I did. I did say <laughs> that there'd be the fair, um, and that would be fine. But I don't want to like do me. I don't want to do two hours. So um, you can um, put me down either at one or two, and I can double up with Jesse or Steve. Um, Dwayne, I'll put you down at two because that's the remaining hole. Steve okay. is by himself at one, and I'm by myself from nine to no, no. I have Don. I'm not, I'm by myself at ten, and Steve is by himself as at one. I so I have to retract my offer. I totally Oops. forgot this is after my hip replacement surgery. On oh no! The 12th. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going anywhere on the twenty second. Uh -oh. Sorry. Okay, so we need help. <laughs> um all right i mean if there are gaps i'll try to slot in whenever i wake up <laughs> well okay but um laura can you make it at all or are you out of town or no all yeah. right so we're if gonna the have booths to are, if stephanie puts the booths close together i can bounce back and forth okay yeah i i so i haven't done it yet but it's some uh, very soon um i will send out an email to the entire vendor list of everybody. And I ask people if they have special special requests, like some people need to be sited near power supply. Some people have mobility issues and need to be near a parking space. Right. Um, so I will be asking. So you can tell me, as long as you tell me which group you're with and let me know who you wanna be with. I can, I'm, I try to make that happen. In a comedy, hey, Stella, Stella, which group are you with? The UMass Arboretum. We'll be handing okay. out trees in the morning, so it'll probably be really busy because people like trees, but then hopefully nice. we run out and then, uh, That's great. That's yeah. really great. Um, and sometimes okay. it's not that busy in the morning, it actually picks up like around lunchtime. It gets really busy, I would say, from like the 11 30 noonish until two that's kind of when the most people are there so the very beginning it's mostly just really busy with vendors and at the end it usually starts to slow down okay so then maybe we should try hey don if i do the um set up myself in the morning is there any chance you can do the afternoon instead don's not don, here don's, don's not, not here. here don's not here ah okay i'll contact him separately I'm, I am flexible. If you'd prefer me in a different time slot, um, I can be pushed around. Steve, okay. <laughs> Steve, we currently overlap for some of the busiest times. Maybe if I just take your 11 o'clock slot and put it in at two, so you're going now from noon to two, we'll overlap a little bit. Okay, I'll, I'll work on the rest of this later. I don't wanna take up too much time here, but I wanted to nudge everyone because we're in trouble. <laughs> It looks like we're going to have just one person at the booth pretty much all day if we can manage that and then someone's going to have to come back to clean up and it may end up being me if necessary um but we'll figure if, it out if i'm in town i will for sure help you clean up okay 
So Jesse will help clean up. Um, so Jesse, uh, I'll put you down if you're in town. What time do you want to show up then? How about at how about three and four, Jesse? If you're in town, anything's fine. Okay, I'll put you down for a couple hours at three and four. Steve and Dwayne will sign off, and you'll sign on um, if you're there. But we still have to fill in a hole with somebody else. All right, we'll figure it out later, um, hopefully. So the other thing I wanted to ask about are flyers. Um, we're going to have two. First of all, two easels, right? Which I'm going to get from Jesse. Is that correct? One. I have one one easel. Do we have a second easel, or is it just the one? Just the one. Okay. I can probably find one at Hampshire and and steal it and bring it for the event. Because I think we wanted to put information on one and collect information on the other or something like that. We are uh -oh. being recorded, Steve. <laughs> Uh-oh. It's not in use. I can borrow one from Hampshire. There you go. <laughs> from my, my place of yeah. employment. <laughs> you know, come to think of it, I can probably borrow one from, from my work, too, if I need to. Um, now that you mention it, I realize we don't have paper. What we need is the big paper. Uh, uh, Jesse. Do you have a big paper thing? Okay, good. Yeah. yeah. No, no, just a big, big blank paper. paper. Okay. Well, what's uh, what's the plan, Lori? What are you planning on? So to do something like you did at the at the um, sustainability at the at the block party, right? Um, something similar to that. Um, and I think there were there was enough stuff here for two. Uh, I forget what it was. A uh, big piece of uh, okay. Um, yeah, I think it was basically to recapitulate what we did at the at the block party, have a chart like that up for people to, you know, these are which of these things have you already done? And, and oh, that was it. There was one where we were going to do which of these things have you already done and give people stickers to put in place, which I can pick up. And the other one was to have people uh, write down their ideas. If I remember right. Does that okay. sound familiar? So, yeah, yeah, no. So it's going to be very similar to the block party thing. But yeah. That's exactly what we did. Yeah. And then we had uh, barcodes that linked to mass save, to yep. something about yep. ECAC, and you know I think there's like week biweekly meetings. This is when we meet. And it's just a uh, right. And I think um, I was so if you have anything, what I was going to do is put together one pagers. Uh, if I can get the pace flyer by then, that would be great. I'm not going to have a stack of flyers, but I'd like to have one and a QR code maybe. And I'll leave those. Yep. Yeah, go ahead. Dwayne? Oh, I was just going to say, if they're like eight and a half by 11 flyers, um, I have some, from my place of employment, I have some uh, of like those plexiglass lean things that lean a little bit. Um, Excellent. That can be just on the table and and that way it just stays there as opposed to people don't have to take take them. They can just see them. If, if it has a QR code, they can use that. But it's like tilted up as opposed to lying flat on the table. Yeah, so my goal is to have all the flyers have a QR code somewhere on them, and um, I'll make them up if necessary. But to have just one pagers, and I think we had this. Is, I want to put the sustainable Amherst link on there. I, I think it, it's actually funny that I, I looked at the sustainable Amherst page again today, Stephanie, and it looks like it's gotten an update. It looks really nice. There's a lot of really good stuff on it. Um, it got an update a while ago from our intern last summer but I went through and actually cleaned it up because um, thank you Jenny Kellick who I know is in, an attendee <laughs> um, pointed <laughs> out that there were some um, uh, some bad links and some missing information so I just went through uh, last week and just went through every single item and cleaned it up. Cool. Well, it looks really nice. And I like that the sustaining Amherst seems to be slowly becoming sustainable Amherst. It's, it's not. Amazing. It's not. No? That was wrong. That was actually, that was a mistake. We had wanted to be sustainable Amherst, but another group had taken that <laughs> name. So that logo is actually needs to be changed to sustaining. Oh. And I'm sorry you hate it, Lori, but it's not <laughs> okay. really likely to change anytime soon. Dang. All right. Well, I'll, <laughs> sorry. Do, I'll do sustaining Amherst then and have the link to that, a link to the CARP. Read the CARP here. Um, I was also going to do some more specific ones on decarbonize your home for homeowners, decarbonize your home for renters, the pace flyer, the mass safe QR code. And I think that's it. So there'll be a bunch of these things to as talking points, you know, for people who come by if they want to talk. 
Um, I'll leave out the EV stuff because there are gonna be other displays of that. Um, but that will be in the decarbonize your home. There are suggestions for things like riding bikes and stuff like that. I noticed even on the sustaining Amherst page. So um, I'll, and I'll figure out something to put on each of these. And my goal is to have them for you at the next meeting so that if there's any changes, I have time to make them before the 22nd. So I'm gonna to try to put all that together. So if you all have anything you wanna send me that should go on a flyer, I already have some stuff, please send it. I have some, I have a few things that will probably go in, but please send it. If you have a flyer that you've used before, please send it to me in the next few days because I got to do this during spring break. I'm going to be in trouble. <laughs> spring break is this week. <laughs> this week. Uh, yeah. Yes, right. Um, maybe a question for um, uh, Stephanie, but also maybe Stella, since you're going to be representing UMass there as well. But there is a, uh, I'm, I'm on a committee to where we have an annual um, energy symposium in May um, where it's UMass, but the public's invited as well uh, that I was uh, looking for having some presence to outreach and advertise about it, or at least inform the public about it at the, uh, for, for the, at the sustainability festival. And so we could, if, if, if it's okay with ECAC, we could put up, I could have a flyer on that that just posted somewhere. Uh, but I'm also wondering whether Stephanie, do you know whether UMass is going to have any other table presence and Stella, it sounds like the Arboretum will. I've been having trouble um, with UMass groups. Um, I had some organizations that have participated in the past and I still have links to uh, or email information for those groups, but then they don't respond. And I think at the last festival in 19, which is the last one we held, um, they just didn't show up and I'd never heard from them. And I keep asking like, please tell me if you're going to be there and then people don't respond and then I have these gaps um, and I like to have UMass representation so if there are groups that you know um, please just give them my contact information I, we're more than happy to support some UMass tabling I mean because it is Earth Day it's very likely UMass is going to want to do some of their own stuff too so sometimes we compete with uh, with them a little bit for yeah, so be, yeah, yeah. Being Saturday, it's going to be a little bit different. Um, uh, but yeah, it, are those student groups generally? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're? student okay. groups. I mean, I've had, uh, you know, I've had like Ludmilla has come actually in the past and yeah. had students. I don't think she's participated in the last few years, but, um, you know, I just, if you can get the word to folks, um, I'm going to try to get the word out. It's just, there's, so much yeah. happening right now and it's Thank all you. happening at the same time so my head's spinning a little bit so i haven't been able to do as much active outreach to get vendors but um so i would just say you know if you know folks please okay. send them my way laurie you'll need rocks <laughs> That was what I was right. raising my hand before about <laughs> is like um, flyers are great, but when we get a windy day, like we have had wind sometimes, not every year, <laughs> but there are times when we get a wind gust where whole tents go sort of rolling right by. And if you have a bunch of flyers, it's really a drag because <laughs> they'll go anywhere. So just, you know, just as long as you have a way to sort of keep them and, and a few um, smaller rocks are not always sufficient. <laughs> right. And Dwayne has those flyer holders too, so that'll help if we can use a few of those. Yeah. So. Okay. Dwayne, I can for sure take those flyers. I'll be driving the truck over with trees, and so you can just put them in my Holtzworth mailbox yep. or something. So, Lori, in action item for the next meeting, or we'll have we'll talk about this again at the next meeting. Right. Okay. Okay, uh, Stephanie, over to you on staff updates. Okay, I'll try to make this quick because I want to make sure Laura has time too. Um, so the uh, GZA solar presentation happened on Monday night. Uh, we had 21 attendees. Um, it was short, but it was meant to be. Uh, it was really meant to be sort of an information session about what the process was, um, which you all saw. I think um, Adrian had shared it with you. So just to let people know what the process was, but also to sort of encourage engagement to 
provide feedback. So the three opportunities and how to do that were outlined several times. Um, as I said, we had 21 attendees. And during that session, Adrian mentioned that already 129 surveys were completed. So I asked her today for an update. And as of today at like, I don't know, three o'clock or so, 241 responses surveys have been completed. Um, none of them are non-English speaking, unfortunately. It's just the English responses. And then there were 10 email submissions uh, for folks requesting updates as the process moves along. So um, that was pretty robust. 10,000 postcards were mailed. Um, so I don't know if you all received them, but if you did, um, that'd be great. Um, the Engage Amherst page is up. So there's link to the survey there and some information with also an open-ended survey question. One, I think that actually came from this group that couldn't be included in the actual survey, but was added as an Engage Amherst question. So that's up so people can um, provide responses to that. I've been, I actually get the responses to that. Um, there've been a few, not a lot, but I've had some. Um, so that's in terms of the solar assessment process. Um, Ste Stephanie and um, yep. Lori might have a question. Oh, go ahead, Lori. You're muted, Lori. Sorry, I keep going. I just had a, a comment when you were done. So keep going. Okay. Um, so I uh, just wanted to let you all know that there's uh, the budget hearing is this Friday for staff to present their, um, I don't know if it's everybody, but like some departments are presenting their budget, proposed budgets to the town manager and the finance director. So I'm on with that. So just again, I think I told you this last time, but um, right now sustainability is kind of in this nebulous place. Um, it's kind of under conservation. And I spent a lot of time really thinking through like all of the things that I'm doing. So I had this extensive kind of list of things about what I'm doing. So currently what I'm working on, what I've done last year, what needs to be done in the future, what's going to be ongoing. Um, there were some operating items in there. So there's a kind of extensive list. And I was told we probably won't be able to cover every little thing. Um, it didn't get included as part of the conservation budget, so I wanted to make sure that it was definitely being addressed. Um, so, so at least for this year's presentation, it's kind of going to be under this umbrella of conservation still, but it is its own separate budgets. It's really, if you're confused, so am I. So we're doing our best to sort of pull that out so that maybe by next year it will have its kind of own slated like sustainability is a department that is still under this whole functional area of um, conservation and development. We might be also proposing to change the name maybe. I don't know if that's gonna happen, but that might happen. Um, so if we change the name, that might make it easier to sort of make the case of sustainability sort of being under that umbrella for its own department. So the, pr the problem is again, is this a, um, and a reorg, and if it is, then it needs to go to the town council. I think that all needs to be discussed and figured out at a higher level. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention that sort of pertains to this whole group um, is that uh, the remote meetings are supposed to, uh, our legislation ends March 31st. However, um, I've heard that the uh, state legislature is going to extend it for another two years to March 31st of 2025. I don't know if that's officially happened yet, so I need to find out. Um, it will, it has happened. Andrew, do you know that for sure? Okay, great. Then that just means that, you know, we'll still stay with remote meetings until 2025. Um, very quick, I know I heard Lori ask for CCA update. I'm going to give it to you quick. It's kind of complicated, but... Um, so we're moving forward with the CCA under the MOU. There's already an executed MOU between Amherst, Pelham, and Northampton. Amherst is identified in the MOU as the lead community. So we are going to move that. We are moving forward with the CCA. Um, we're doing it this way because putting together the GPE, there were just some pieces of it that got a little more complicated because it was going to involve staff from one of the communities, I mean, right now we're kind of identifying it from Amherst, but it could potentially be Northampton, but that's because we won't have the CCA up and running with some funds supporting 
an administrative position or potential programming. And until that happens with the stream um, of funding coming in, it has to be one of the communities supporting that role. And it would um, impact staff that's already working, doing some of those tasks for their respective municipalities. So the bottom line is though, that CCA is moving forward. Um, we we'll probably, um, I had a, a meeting yesterday and I don't wanna say too much because our whole, our own working group um, hasn't been updated yet, but I just had a meeting yesterday with the consultant and um, working with the other two communities to just move some things forward right now that have to happen in place. And we're gonna have a CCA working group meeting or Valley Green Energy working group meeting probably in the next week or so. Um, so it is moving forward. S Steve had his hand up first and then Andra. If Lori didn't have a question. Oh, I, did you? I did, I did have one uh, quick thing, um, if that's okay. I, I was more a comment. The solar thing that happened on Monday, I was there because I was curious as to what it was gonna look like to the public. And as far as I knew, there were only six people in the room because as a participant, you can't see who's there. So right. that looks sort of sad. It would be nice yeah. if someone would tell us how many are actually in the room because we can't see as participants. Uh, yeah, six I think because that's all that entered the survey, the men's survey. Yeah, I know, I know. And I agree. Um, I think, you know, I think Adrian was just trying to get through it. We had interpretation and American Sign Language. And so we were really sort of just nervous about how that, <laughs> without the whole thing crashing and burning. So um, we had had a, a big meeting ahead of time to sort of do a run through. And um, and even doing that, the ASL didn't show up on my recording. So somehow I have to figure out how to get that. It, it showed up to people who, if someone was participating, they could have turned it on easily and it showed right up, but it didn't get pinned to my I was told not to pin it and I should have. Um, so um, I wish I had. So anyway, um, hopefully we can add it in. I just have to follow. I've, I've already got an inquiry as to whether we can follow up and do that, but I agree about the number of people. There were 21 people for sure. Excellent. Yeah, that, that that's great to hear. I was worried that the, the six people that did the online survey that was like all of us and no. nobody else. And I, no, I was no, one, so I figured it was. A, yeah, I was one too. <laughs> yeah. I figured um, you were the ones that were participating in that piece, but people, you know, I think people get intimidated, even though you and, you know, I think sometimes it's, even though the links are there and how to do it is there, people don't always feel comfortable. So clearly 15 people did not feel comfortable. <laughs> that's that's good. I mean, that's fine. Um, I wanted to ask. They they mentioned the map and they showed that little thumbnail image of it, the the um, of the areas feasible for solar. Are do you know when they are going to release the more detailed map? Yeah. So sorry. I think that was supposed to be part of my updates. I know I forgot something. Um, that is going to happen in April because. Um, they're going to get the information to our GIS person, but he has some stuff that he has to do with it, and he can't get to it until April because he's working on this really big, massive Munis project, and he's one person. So um, it, the timing is actually good because it coincides with the release of the report. So those pieces will happen simultaneously. So the interactive map will be available at the time that the report is available. And what about, is that late April or early April? Um, I, it's, I don't know exactly, probably late April. Realistically, it's going to be, I think, late April or mid, well, mid April. I think we said like mid April. Thank you. Yeah. Sandra? Um, yeah. So, um, the, uh, the municipal aggregation CCA, um, as it's known for short, is um, required to have community a community meeting before, um, and a number of other things that that are being worked on. Um, and if we have the date of that meeting, I think that we should announce it. We don't have it yet. I'll tell you. That's why we have to have another meeting. Um, it's not a bad thing. It's actually a good thing. That, but there's some background stuff that has to happen. Um, and the con the consultant isn't ready with some of their pieces yet and won't be. So it's not just staff not getting things. It's it's yeah. things have to fall in place and we so need more I, a little more time. 
So I'm but, guessing that means it's not going to be at the end of March. That's no, but it's not going to be much later, honestly. So we can talk about that later. And when I have more firm dates at the next meeting, which I, I should definitely have them by then, I can share. Thanks, Stephanie. Okay. Um, ECAT member updates. Uh, Laura, do you want to go? Oh, Steve, you had something? Okay. Great. Yeah. So, um, as we discussed last time, we had Kathy come to speak about the net zero school, and we had agreed that um, we would work on an op ed that we could um, potentially put in, in the paper from ECAC. So I worked with on it and shared it with Jesse and he provided some really great feedback and um, edits. Um, so I, I think the easiest thing to do is just to share, I mean, I can share my screen now, but I don't think that's really that conducive to folks reading something. So what I would do is um, ask, I think Stephanie Visu, I said this to you yesterday, maybe if you can share it with the rest of the committee. Um, I think what we would like to do in terms of timing, the vote is May 2nd. Um, I don't know what the queue will be like for getting things into the paper. So what I would hope we could do is have you all review it and with the goal of um, incorporating feedback and having something we could vote on at the next meeting. But I guess that depends on when we have the meeting. Um, yeah, Stephanie. Stephanie. Yeah, I was just going to say, if um, do you want members to send um, feedback directly to you? And do you want to have a date by? So Yes. So I, I, th I guess that depends on them because originally I was thinking if the meeting was in two weeks I would like feedback by next Wednesday but if the meeting's going to be next Wednesday then that won't work <laughs> um, I can send them meet the letter out right after this meeting okay that would be great um it's only 750 or I think it's actually only 720 words it's only allowed to be a 750 word so it's not very long um and could, it, you, I, could, yes. could you could you read it and 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 share it on screen. I mean, I, can share I, I think waiting is unfortunate because, as you say, there's going to be a, a lot of people who want to put their op ed in about it. Yeah. So, ideally, we would get it. Um, ideally, we would vote on it at the next meeting and then submit it immediately after that to the to the paper. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a I think I'm sure people need more time to review and provide feedback, uh, Laura. I mean, I don't know if you want to run through the gist of it or. Sure. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, so there's just a little intro here, um, just explaining what we are and why we're writing this basically. Um, I, it took me a while to figure out the right framing because we want it. It's a you know technical issue. Um, can can I ask you to to not show the comments and make it bigger because I can't. I'm on a little screen and I cannot even begin to read that. Okay. I don't know how to get this away. Dismiss. Um, then just view comp view. What is this? Google Docs. View reading mode or full screen. Oh, it's still got the stupid comments. Laura, you could you could um temporarily change the font size too. Okay, let me see. Although, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think regardless, right? I think the point is yeah. whether we're not reading the whole thing. I think it's just, I guess, Laura at a high level. Yeah, I mean, and then I could, if the ECAC members, because it's six oh six now. Um, I mean, unless there are other things on. The agenda for member updates if there isn't any then we have time to look at it so let me post that question first uh for the other members any updates that you have and how much time do you need okay 
no updates is good. So yeah, let's, I guess, let's review it in detail then. Just um, if you go to, yeah, no. So because yeah. I changed the view, it's not showing me like how to make. You can't just say view magnify. So, so, so Laura on the, on there you the go. Left. That's it. Yay. Oh, okay, yeah. Good. Okay. Um, okay. So the first paragraph here is just a intro paragraph. Um, we may not need it, but so it'd be great to get your feedback on that. Basically just setting the stage, the background section here. So the angle that I've taken is really focusing on fossil fuels. Um, so starting with sort of just some background on what are fossil fuels and why are they a problem? Um, then transitioning quickly, because I want this to be a positive piece, transitioning quickly into that we do have tools to end our reliance on fossil fuels. Um, Question for you. Yeah. Reliably. The third line on that page should be reliable. Okay. Um, so specifically through electricity generated by renewable power and battery storage. Oh, so talking a little bit about the IRA and how that's providing funding to accelerate the transition to meet our country's goal of greenhouse gas free electricity by 2035. Um, and that once we have that, we can remove the other, or maybe we should say, as we're doing that, we also need to remove the other main use of fossil fuels by electrifying building and vehicles. Um, so then we talk a little bit about buildings and how super efficient and electric heating and cooling systems known as heat pumps have already on outpace gas-fired heating systems in the U.S., and that Maine is actually leading in this transition. So enacting the IRA will, is anticipated to save us money, um, and then we sort of focus in on that money-saving aspect of this. So on May 2nd, Amherst residents will have the opportunity to vote to vote on funding for the new a new elementary school. The school will not use fossil fuels because it will be using a heat pump powered by electricity. And then solar on the roof in the parking lot will generate enough electricity to meet the annual ele electricity demand of the school, making it a net zero energy building. And thanks to IRA and state incentives. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry, I got background. Um, it'll cost less to build and operate this net zero school than one with natural gas heating system. The yeah. town finance committee has proposed to take $5 million from reserves to reduce the tax burden of this project because of the anticipated incentives, credits, and operational savings this net zero building will provide. The comment here is just that the town council still needs to vote on that to make it official. Um, if they've done that before we publish this, we can say that instead of what is written here. Yeah, um, Laura, I think if you, yeah. if you scroll up, I think this paragraph is really important, right? It talks about no, the one that you have the comment on. Yeah. Um, you talk about less costing less and throughout the life of the school. And then you talk about tax burden. I think it's great. I, I just want to make sure that it pops. Uh, and I don't know if it's in the right place or if we should in the first paragraph, you have information on ECAC. I, I wonder if you can think about how you can modify this paragraph and say this is, and, and make it pop, and repeat it again in this paragraph and keep it as is, but consolidate this paragraph in a couple of lines and say, I guess, why people should take notice. Um, and you begin I think with the first paragraph. If you read the first paragraph, it it's a summary of what's below in it, and it says that it is fiscally, uh, you know, and then I, I, maybe it needs to be more explicit, but I think the first paragraph essentially in a few sentences gives the highlight items of what's below, 
knowing that most people will just read the first paragraph. Yeah. So then if you, but there are a lot of people in this town who will dig in and read the whole thing and stay up all night blogging about it. And um, so, but I think it, it's sort of like, I put the, the first paragraph together and the idea is that the following work repeats it, but in more detail. I think yeah. it could be more explicit about the um, reducing, it reduces the tax burden. Yeah, we can certainly take. Yeah, and, and overall operating cost, right? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, Stella, I think maybe you had your hand up first and then Lori, I can't see everybody, so. Yeah, I think, and maybe it's going to get, because I, I could only read to the bottom of the page, but I also think if it's at towards the bottom, then it should be higher up. Framing climate change specifically is like a youth justice issue, like that our children are disproportionately impacted by climate change. Like it just seems appropriate to me and it seems like it has a place in this letter to be something like something about the mental health impacts on our youth of climate change. Um, yeah. Okay. And like, it, it seems it seems like really messed up to have schools that are like burning their futures kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah. But not, don't say it like that. <laughs> Cause I agree about keeping it positive. Uh, uh, but like, does anybody seen that movie No with Gael Garcia Bernal? The like Pinochet referendum movie? Really good movie, highly recommend. Um, but yeah. So can I can I add something? Um, yeah. The first paragraph, uh, I actually like this. You didn't let me, give me time to read the very last couple of sentences on that in other page. So I didn't see that, but the rest of it I like. I haven't finished, I haven't finished it. Do you guys want me to go through the whole thing first? You kind of yeah, you're all, I think you're almost done, but, but the only thing that I don't, that I don't like so far is um, there's the one phrase in that first paragraph as a climate smart hub of youth education, which breaks the flow of the paragraph and doesn't, I don't understand it right away. So I would just say, strike that phrase and start with, we believe the proposed net, much stronger statement. We believe the proposed net zero school will do this, period. Um, I think you should just strike that. Otherwise, I like the letter. Yeah, my, um, my, if, if you don't mind, um, because my comment had to do with this first paragraph as well. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm just always told that the first, first sentence, that not the first paragraph, but the first sentence has to be the popper. And yeah. so I, I would probably... You know, we got a, we yeah, we got a climate action plan, and we got the ECAC and everything. I think the first sentence should be more about we support the school. Uh, yes, uh, for the, the climate activity, the climate uh, benefits of the school, in, in, yep. in a real popping set uh, short sentence. Yep. Great, helpful feedback, everybody. I will read the whole thing when it's in print, though. <laughs> and and Laura, do you get to choose the title, or is that the editorial staff the paper that does that? That's probably. a good question. We should suggest the title for sure. Yeah, you can suggest it. They'll do what they want, <laughs> but you should suggest one. Yes, definitely suggest one that that also emphasizes the key message. Okay, if anybody has ideas, feel free to throw it in here or send send it over email. Um, okay, great. So yeah, so then just the final paragraphs are again sort of honing in on the cost savings so that the building is going to the school will replace the existing wildwood and fort river schools two buildings that are in need of significant repairs and where we cur currently spend 25 or two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year annually on oil and natural gas the burning of the oil and natural gas in these buildings emits the same amount of greenhouse gases hey, per year. hey laura can you just say $250,000 annually. Yes. Um, without a new school and the grants provided by the state, the town will be responsible for repairing the existing buildings and bringing them to code. And this will cost approximately $40 million per school and does not include removing fossil fuels from the building or adding solar. So this sort of gets to our key point here that replacing these buildings is both cost effective, fiscally responsible, and climate responsible. 
I Good. think that, that could be your title. Yeah. Or some version of that could be your title. Another minor thought, if you use dollar signs, you might be able to replace the word dollar in a couple <laughs> of places and save a few words. Here. I think also like this project will allow us to show the region what is possible when, oh, now it's called up, when we work together to tackle an enormous challenge. I also think we it's worth it to like circle back to kind of the youth and be like, and show our children that we're serious about protecting their future. Mm -hmm. Something to, like that. Okay, any other quick thoughts on this? Otherwise, if folks want to send me comments back by Friday, since we've already gone through it, and um, we can get a finalized version ready for folks to look at in the packet for the next meeting. How soon will we get a copy of this so we can really look at it? So I think Stephanie said she'll send it right after this meeting. Okay, perfect, excellent. Okay, great, that's all from me on that. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, Laura. Really nice talk. Yeah. Thanks, Jesse, for his helpful input. Okay, uh, let's talk about uh, our next meeting versus when it's going to be. Do um, we're talking about having it next week? Laura, can you make the call next week, or you are the only one who said that's unlikely? I definitely cannot make the call next week. Okay. Um, but if Jesse can make it, I'm happy to hand over the reins of finalizing this letter to him, or to anyone who wants to take it over. Like I don't think I necessarily need to be there, but I will not be there next week. Okay. Can everybody else make the call next week? Well, I can, again, again, at five, I would probably still be a little bit late, but the important thing is that if we're going to do this next week, I really ask everyone to please send me whatever you have for flyers. If there's something you, if you have a pretty picture you'd like on something or a flyer you've used before, or even the pace flyer, um, if it's ready, please send that to me in the next couple of days. Cause if I don't work on it this weekend, I'm going to run out of time real fast this week or this weekend. I mean, we don't have to see every single flyer that goes on the table, do we? We trust you. <laughs> In that case, there's no rush. <laughs> Are we uh, uh, agreeing then on the meeting for next week, uh, April 22nd, 5 to 6, 30 p.m.? Who is, who can't make it? Besides Laura, I don't think I'm going to be able to, or good chance. I'm I'm having some minor hand surgery earlier in the day, and I understand I'll be a little bit groggy after that. Okay, so you still have a quorum, so we can still have the meeting. Although remember, I'll be there late, so and you're going to be so chairing, far. Lori, correct? So we could do it oh. from five to six, right? Because Vasu is not going to be there next week. Who's going to be chairing? <laughs> Me. Wait. You would be. But I'm going to be late. Well, that's what I'm saying. So hold on one second. Vasu, you're definitely not going to be there, correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So, Lori, if you're going to be late, we can make the meeting. I mean, this isn't a regular scheduled meeting. So we can adjust it a bit this time if we want to make it five to six. We can do that. Five, but if we start at five, I'm going to be late. <laughs> okay. So, so what time would work for five, you? Five fifteen. I could be there earliest five fifteen. It would be I'd be from I'd be doing it from work, but I can do that. Or why don't we just say because our meetings typically go to six thirty. So why don't we just start at five thirty and go, and to go five thirty to six thirty? Does that okay. work for everybody else? Yeah. Okay. And, so, and for the agenda, then if that's the case, right? Uh, it's only going to be one hour. We're going to talk festival. We'll talk about the op-ed and then gas pipeline or do we need- You're not going to have a lot of time, so yeah, that's keep it I realistic. Thought. Yeah, I think I think it'll just be festival, op-ed, and the then uh, uh, pace. Update the primary that. goal of the next meeting is that we are all agree on the letter and then who sends it to the paper okay so um the following meeting will be april 12th and 
I will be drugged. <laughs> I will not be at that meeting. Okay, so hold on one second. Are we going, so we're going to cancel what would have been the meeting on the 29th. We're going to cancel that meeting, correct? Maybe not. How about we can... Don, so Don won't be available to discuss PACE on the 22nd. Right. So well, that will not be on the agenda. I'm thinking so, the 22nd will be a, an, an additional meeting and we yeah, continue yeah. to have our others. Well, yeah. the meeting on the 29th, except so Lori and Vasu will not be there on the 29th. And Andrew, it sounds like you won't be there on the 29th. Oh, yeah, okay. No, I will be there on the, I can be there on the 29th. I can't be there on the following meeting. Can can someone share, Stephanie, if both Laura, Lori and I are out? Yeah. I have to double check on that. I'm not sure, actually, okay. to be honest. Okay. Um, I think you can designate someone as an acting chair, but I need to, there's there's mm -hmm. process and I need to make sure that we're following the process. Okay. So um, let me just double check in with uh, the clerk's office on that. So at least for the next meeting, it will be Lori chairing and we'll be from 5.30 to 6.30. For the meeting on the 29th, um, I will have to find out. And I'll, I'll be doing that, finding out this week. Because and, I need and to find out. Could, if that's possible, I, I don't know if the group thinks it should be an hour or just keep the two hour meeting because we have the extra hour next week. I we wanna be conscious of everybody's time. I vote an hour. <laughs> <laughs> well i i would suggest we keep it the way it is and and try to be wrap up in, a, in an hour but yeah not, just not not not, uh, not uh, feel like we have to end at an hour um if we still have more to go over yeah okay that's for the 29th you're talking about okay and so Vasu, i think I'm, yeah. yes i'm gonna want to talk to you then about the agendas for both the meeting on the 22nd and 29th. We can do those ahead of time. So I'm going to be getting drafts to you. So it sounds like there's no need. One of the things I had written down earlier was to maybe write a letter about what was it? The um oh shoot, the Springfield the environmental justice. justice. Yeah. Do we not want to do that? Or do we want to wait on that to draft something in support yeah, of those? Guys? I think I think we should wait. Wait on that. Okay. Let's let's at least take the time to review it. Okay. As so that's action. what we'll do. We'll review that next time. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna work on the draft agenda for the next two meetings. I'll get them to Vasu and get them out to all of you. Um yeah. each meeting. So this next meeting will only be an hour on the 22nd, but the 29th will be our regular meeting from 4 30 to 6 30, and it just might end early. And maybe let's and it might even be canceled if. Someone if we don't have a quorum, it. yeah. Right. If or don't someone have a else can share. Yeah. Yeah. And, I think, and... I mean, I think what happens is that you, Vasu, would be the one to appoint someone as acting chair for that meeting, but I just have to make sure that that is absolutely the process. Okay. Let's also try to make sure we get the Springfield Coalition stuff in the packet for next week, just so we can speed that along, because that's another thing that's something we want to, that has a deadline, that has a time frame. Okay. Short. So just get it to me. Can someone okay. just send me the info? Andra? Website. Just Can you just link. send it the link to me? Yeah. Just so I don't have to go find it. Just, I know it's probably not hard, but just send it to me. It would be so much easier. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and Lori, you can make the calls after, right? Until the 22nd of April. I can make the what? You can make these calls uh, after. What calls? These meetings. After the, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, in, oh, in April, be, when I'm yes. gone. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. As long as we don't change any of the dates, I'm good on the April meetings. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, Vasu, I'm just making a note for myself of which just good to just send me the dates that you're going to be gone. Yeah. I'll email it to you. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, I think that's. We're good so yeah uh any public Stephanie, comments? i did not get all that for the minutes but um, that's okay I'll, it was a little confusing and chaotic but i'll i'll, I'll fill it in <laughs> yeah okay. <laughs> okay uh any public comments 
If anyone wants to make a comment, please electronically raise your hand. Okay, it looks like we do not have any questions. Uh, okay, all right, that's all we have time for. Uh, thank you everybody for your time and I'll see you all on Earth Day. Yeah, take care. Good <laughs> travels. Yep. Good thank travel. you. Safe Bye. travels. Thanks all. Bye. Bye.